1942, Adolf Hitler put on the battlefield the largest weapon ever used in combat. We are talking about a cannon of titanic proportions, for stories high and more than 30 meters long, which required thousands of men to operate and fired cartridges capable of penetrating layers of up to 7 meters of concrete. This pharaonic weapon responded to the megalomaniac desires of the Fuhrer, who loved everything that was large and imposing, although it was not as useful as the Wehrmacht had hoped. After a year of being used with difficulty in several campaigns, the Dora or Heavy Gustav cannon had to be withdrawn from service, since its brutal size presented more problems than advantages when it came to besieging the cities defended by the Allies. Join us in a new episode of Military History to learn all about the largest artillery cannon that has ever walked the earth. The Heavy Gustav or Schwerer Gustav design dates back to the late 1930s, at the start of World War II. Hitler wanted to have an imposing weapon, capable of penetrating the Allied defenses in France, on the Maginot Line, which protected the Gallic country against the advancing Germans. The French forts were large multi-layered concrete structures, which were the last defensive bastion that the Führer's forces had to break through to occupy the country. For this reason, Hitler ordered his engineers to develop a weapon capable of penetrating walls of several meters of concrete, or at least one meter wide plates of steel. In charge of the design and manufacture of the heavy Gustav was the Krupp family, who completed the commission two years later, at the end of 1941. Fortunately for the Nazis, the Blitzkrieg strategy, which involved motorized tank regiments, was enough to capture France. When the Gustav was finally introduced, Hitler was fascinated. The immense mass of metal measured 47.3 meters long, 7.1 meters wide and 11 meters high. The imposing cannon, which gave it an effective range of 40 kilometers, towered into the sky over 30 meters long, culminating in an opening of 8 centimeters. As for its ammunition, the Gustav used giant rounds of between 4,800 and 7,100 kilograms, with variable explosive charges between 250 kilograms and 700 kilograms, being able to penetrate layers of up to 7 meters of concrete or 1 meter of steel, respectively. Each projectile was almost 4 meters long, and its diameter varied between 80 centimeters and 1 meter. This made any bunker completely vulnerable to the crushing blow of the Gustav, unloading the tremendous nickel and aluminum shells like the fist of an angry god. For this titanic cannon to destroy the most fortified buildings in Europe, only seven shots were needed. Due to the high costs and time of manufacture, only two units of the Gustav were produced, although only one of them was used, while the second unit, called the Dora, was probably never fired. After strenuous efforts, the heavy Gustav finally saw battle during Operation Barbarossa, in which Adolf Hitler invaded the Soviet Union. It was during the siege of Sebastopol that the Titanic cannon was required by the Wehrmacht. The city located on the Crimean Peninsula was heavily defended by the Soviet Black Sea Fleet, one of the largest subunits within the Red Army Navy. On the other hand, the line that protected Sevastopol was riddled with impenetrable granite forts, which gave the Soviets an enormous strategic advantage over the Germans, who, although outnumbered, could not help but crash into the huge buildings. Each raid meant a loss of key elements, which raised the cost of the campaign day by day. It is not yet known why Hitler decided to embark on such an expensive project, without having previously tested it in battle, although there are those who point out that the Gustavs were the product of his megalomania and ambition. What do you think were the real motives of the Fuhrer to promote the manufacture of several mega cannons? Leave your opinion in the comment box. That's when the biggest gun in history came into play. Four months, a special team of engineers directed thousands of workers to lay rail tracks to Sevastopol, to allow the Gustav to reach its destination. To understand this, we must bear in mind that the Titanic mass weighed 1,350 tons, the equivalent of 60 Panzer IV tanks, without counting its ammunition, which, as we mentioned, varied between 4.8 and 7 tons per projectile. Considering that the Gustav could fire up to 14 rounds per day, and would be used for several months in the Soviet Union, this added several thousand tons more by way of supply. In fact, 
The brutal weight of the cannon, and its particular design, forced the developers to create a type of special tracks, on which not only was it transported, but also maneuvers were carried out to position it before being fired. Putting the Gustav into operation involved the work of thousands of people for its movement, while hundreds of soldiers worked on the pharaonic structure to fire it. Measurements and aiming had to be precise, as you can imagine, since each expended bullet cost a fortune, and was extremely difficult to replace, since supplies took weeks to transport from one point to another. At the same time, its ability to fire was limited, with several hours between the preparation of a shot and another, which allowed the gun to open fire a maximum of 14 times a day. With 100% accuracy each round, the Gustav could destroy two fortifications per round. However, as mentioned above, despite its immense destructive power, the Gustav had many operational problems on the battlefield. To begin with, the difficulties in transporting it did not go unnoticed by the German military high command, who realized, perhaps too late, that with the efforts of time and money involved in the Gustav, entire battalions of heavy artillery or medium tanks. Even more complex was determining its firing position, for which engineers needed to lay special rails at a distance of at least 50 kilometers from the target. Once the railway structure was built, the metal colossus maneuvered, carefully following the instructions of the targeting body, to then position its cannon at an angle. Finally, the rest of the teams operated the different mechanisms that led to the firing of a projectile. Also, it is important to say, they had to cling to something. Most of the soldiers who worked on the Gustav did so on top of the large structure, as if it were a four-story building, which generated enormous recoil, so that if they were not properly supported, they could fall from a height of 10 meters. The worst thing about recoil was that the Gustav had to be repositioned for the next shot, Plus depending on the terrain, not only could the gun move, but the rails as well. But the difficulty that led to the mega cannon being removed had to do with its defensive capabilities. Due to its colossal size, and the fact that it had to be installed in an open field, the Gustav represented an extremely easy target for Allied bombers, since a 40-meter long cannon, mounted on a rail system and surrounded by thousands of soldiers, could be spotted from a distance without difficulty. Although during the campaign in the Crimea it fired some 250 rounds, after this it was disassembled and taken to Germany, never to see action again, although it left a great mark in history as the largest gun ever built. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.